Hello, so I made a video the other day about interior transitions and how I do it and uh, that, that thing I didn't learn until I started making games video and someone pointed out that it might be a helpful thing to learn because you know, some people have some older systems that they're developing on and can't do fully openable interiors that's kind of why I do it too <laughs> so I thought we'd go over it so in our interaction system, let's create a new folder. Um, just call it interior transitions, I guess. You can store it wherever you want. I'm just going to put it in here so I can isolate it out. And we're going to create a blueprint class. This is going to be an actor and it's going to be door transition underscore BP. Now we're going to create one more blueprint actor and this is going to be transition target underscore BP. So this is going to be the door that we interact with and then when we teleport this will be the teleport point. So let's open the transition target real quick because it really just needs one thing. So we're just going to add an arrow and I'm going to drag it up above the ground a little bit and then that's pretty much it. I'm going to compile and save and close that down. So now I'm going to open up the door transition and I'm going to add a static mesh that will represent our door. And I'm just going to put a cube on it right now. So drag it up and 0.5, 0.1 that's good enough for a door right now. And I'm gonna add a tag to this thing so that we can interact with it. Compile that. Move that right there. And basically, oh wait, we need to add our... So click class settings and under interfaces implemented interfaces. If it comes up like this and you don't like that, just hit class defaults and go back and it'll be open again. So the implemented interfaces, we want that interact BPI. And then on event interact, we will want to get a selected transition target and then move to it. So let's add a variable that will be our transition target point. It will be a transition oops, transition target object reference and then we'll click this little eye so that we can get access to it. We can uh, set it in the editor. So on interact we want to get player camera manager that way we can do a little fade out. So fade camera, start camera fade right here. And we're going to go from 0 to 1 on the alpha over the course of however long you want it to be. I'm going to do 3 seconds. And then we'll hold when finished. We'll add a delay directly afterwards that I'm going to set for 3.1 seconds. Then we're going to set actor location and rotation. Then we will plug this directly in here. We want it to be a little bit longer so that the screen is fully black before we start moving the player around. Otherwise it gets jarring. Now let's get that transition target point. Get actor transform. And then we'll split that struct pin because we need to add to the location and then we're only going to use the Z rotation. So let's make rotator on this side and break rotator on this side so we can plug in that Z. It should probably work if you just plug this directly in but I always I'm always leery about that just because I've had issues where not that my characters tilted in weird ways so this just affects their natural rotation that they can do. So from the return value location, we want to add to it because since this is sitting on the ground and our character's pivot point is basically like right here, 
if we don't add to it, then she'd just appear like that, possibly fall through the ground. So we're going to add 90 to it, because if you remember, then uh, inside the blueprint, she actually sits at like negative 90. So if we add 90, then it sits about right. So we set the actor location and rotation. We do a little bit of a delay just to make sure she gets there fully before we get player camera manager. Again. Oh, and we need to actually tell it what, what, uh, so let's get player character and just plug that into the target. That way it's not moving this thing around because we got to tell it what actor location and rotation we're adjusting. So we'll get the player camera manager. Start camera fade again, and this time it's from 1 to 0 over the course of 3 seconds, and hold when finished. That way it stays lit up. We will add a couple things to this, so let's add an interacted, be interacted. I always forget the B at the beginning, but when it's booleans, it's good to have a small B right there. Because when you drag it out, then uh, it just says interacted, but this way it's easier to mark that it's a boolean. So we'll add a branch to the beginning of this and plug in that interacted. And if they have not interacted with it, as in this is false, then we want to go ahead and set it to true. And then at the end... Let's set interacted back to false. Of course, on this end, uh, it would be fine. So let's, let's check it real quick. So I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to set a transition target right there. Don't forget that when you interact with it, you need to actually establish this is the one I'm going for. So let's... Oh, it's tiny. We might need to make that a lot bigger. So it's fading out. And then I've transitioned over to where I was at. Or where I was wanting to go. So I'm just going to drag this down. And... Let's see. Three and three and two. Of course, if you have a door mesh, you can actually just drop that door right there. So, compile that real quick. And I'm going to drag another one over here. And another one of these over here. Well, I'll do it this way. So this is the way I do it in my games, is I'll have like a door set up so like this is the exterior door that's on the outside of a building and this is its interior target point so you want to make sure it's right there and then this would be the interior door that takes you back outside of the map and you would just to that one so now oh. So I run up, interact with the door, and then I'm inside the house, in theory, you know, if there was a house here, and then, and then I'm back outside. So that's how I do interior transitions. I don't usually personally worry about level streaming or anything like that because my, my maps are usually fairly small. That three seconds is a bit, let's say 1.5, 1.6 right here. Cause that, that fade out is a little slow. But you can play around with values and kind of find the one that you like. And then I'm inside. And then I'm outside. So yeah, 
that's pretty much all there is to that. It's a simple technique and uh, combine this with some uh, level streaming if you got a really big world. And Ryan Laley has a really good video on level streaming. I don't, like I said, I don't usually worry about it too much because I usually do smaller condensed maps. But if you're doing something open world and you needed that, he's got a good video on that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, I'll see y'all later on. Oh, wait, one more thing you can do is you can add, like, right here, if you wanted to add, like, a, a little sound effect, right here would be a good place. So just add in your spawn sound at location and then get the actor's location and you can add in your little the doorknob jiggle or whatever you wanted and then on the other end after the camera fades back in maybe a door shutting or right here as it's fading back in you know just different things you can do all right let's save and i'll see you later